Okay, so today we're going to work on the greens in the background and in the pots. And I'm using here a uh, hooker's green um, deep hue permanent. It could be any any green is fine. It doesn't have to be uh, this color. Um, sap green is fine. And uh, cadmium yellow medium, but cadmium yellow light would be fine. And we're going to start with the first layer. So I'm using more like a medium tone, kind of, not too dark, not too light. And I'm just going to add some greens. I'm using, uh, any, uh, again, uh, you can use any brush. Um, this is uh, a flat or a, um, a bright. So any brush is fine. For the first layer, let's darken a little bit down here at the bottom. So all of this, these, this, this green is actually behind the ledge, not in front of it, and not on it. So I'm turning the brush around, flat, <coughs> I'm using the flat part here, and then just to wisp it, I'm just turning it around. This this part is the one in the pot. I'm also going to use uh, burnt sienna for the two pots, this one and that one in the front. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow. To the one here in the front. Pot in the front. Take it a little bit uh, darker here in the center, and then I will put more light colored green on top when it's dry. It's better if it's dry. Oh, yeah, no, I'm gonna leave it. I just wanna. So, this is good. This is cadmium red light. Let's take a bit of cadmium yellow medium, put it in, and tiny, tiny bit of green, and that will tone the color down.
green is opposite red on the color wheel so it's a good color to tone the red down and uh, we're just gonna add a hint Ooh. hint of flowers in here just for color actually mostly I'm just dabbing with the corner of my brush. I will highlight this and uh, eventually this uh, red I'm putting in there, or, or orange I should say. I'm going to pause. Okay, so I added a little bit of center for the flowers just to give them a shape and a direction with with the green, same green uh, we're using, dark. And now I have here cadmium yellow light. I'm going to use green and I'm going to add a little bit of cadmium yellow light. Same green I was using, and I switched to a round brush, and I'm just going to give some of the leaves a little bit of a shape. without losing the some of the dark green. All right, that's good. Let's do this one. We're going to be putting flowers in here too. So again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Now, let's highlight this part. I'm going to put shape of leaves, random. And I'm going to overlap some of them over the the um, ledge a bit. some stems
Okay, so this is in the background. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of the yellow and I'm going to highlight the ones in the front so we can see them because right now they're kind of the same color as the ones in the background. This way, we'll just bring them forward a bit. Okay. I'm going to be highlighting the flowers using cadmium red light and cadmium yellow light. And I don't think we need to tone down the red at this point because we're just highlighting a little bit here and there. Take a couple of stems up from this one here. And grab some yellow that has, even if the yellow has a bit of green, doesn't matter, some yellow. I'm going to use the same kind of idea and put some flowers here in the yellows too because I don't want to put too many colors, um, different colors in here. I'm just going to use yellow and orange for the flowers in the background and then keep keep it very simple because we still have more colors to come with the other with the rest of the uh, painting. Okay. This is white. Add white to the yellow I'm using, just a bit, so I can highlight the flowers.
perfect I will add the burnt sienna right now and then I'll stop for a minute I'll pause which is just burnt sienna I think the, the pot in the original reference is a white kind of porcelain, but I think burnt sienna here would look much better. And a bit of burnt sienna on this one. This is just green, and I'm just creating shadows with the green and burnt sienna there together, mixed. Just a bit of uh, a little bit of shadows, but I will be um, anyway. I will be um, highlighting. I have burnt umber here, raw umber, sorry, raw umber, and this is what I used for the wall. I am going to use a little bit of white in my raw umber and make it a, like a, a, a glaze. And with this glaze, on top of the ledge, let's add a bit of more white because it dries darker. I'm going to add kind of a, a hint of a shadow from the greens. Because it gives it more of a interesting look. That's it. And I'm taking green, the, the same green I've been using yellow putting yellow in it highlighting it a little bit of white and that will give me a nice light green and with this light green wipe my brush brown brush and I'm highlighting the tip of these The greens that I have in here just the tip it gives it depth and and it brings forward these uh, 
beautiful leaves. Just the tip, kind of, don't go all the way in. Because if you go all the way in, you bring those leaves out too much. Same on this side. I'm going to do the same here. I'm just fixing this uh, little part. I'm reshaping the leaf a bit. That's it done. So this is this is done. Now I'm going to highlight the pots using uh, burnt sienna cadmium red light white and again let's take I think in there I can see a highlight coming from the left I'm going to take burnt sienna again, just burnt sienna, and kind of soften my transition of highlight slowly. Because when I switch to the highlight, it looks harsh, and I'm softening the transition from light to dark. And the only way to do it is to use the same color that I had before and try to blend. That's good. A little bit more of the white color in the burnt sienna and just here. So I end up with light, medium, dark. I'm going to do the same with the big pot right here. <clears throat> and let's take a little bit of white. Red. And 
give these parts some highlight. Let's do the same, just a little bit more highlight, tiny little bit. All right, that's good. That's good. All right, now we've done the background of the flowers and the um, greens and the pots. So let's do the face. And if we have time, we'll do the, the hand as well. I have Burnt Sienna, Winsor & Newton in here. If you don't have Winsor & Newton, Burnt Sienna, red, cadmium red light, a bit of um, yellow ochre, white will do um, and I have here burnt umber for the darks so I'm going to go with medium tone for now Winsor and um, burnt sienna and white let's do this part of the face it's going to dry darker because it's on a dark background we can do the same for the hand And while I have burnt umber, what I'm going to do, since I have burnt umber, I am going to put some burnt umber on her hair, especially. Let's put some burnt umber. We don't need to be, we don't need the burnt umber to be too dark. So I'll I'll add yellow ochre because once I work work on the hand, on her hand, and highlight it, it's going to be harder to do the hair in the back if it's not done first so this is burnt umber with yellow ochre a little bit of yellow ochre in the burnt umber you know, in the back of the hair, the head, and especially where the hands are, it's going to be a little bit darker than the rest of the head. Did you paint over her ear with the color here? Yes, I did. Because I can always put it back with the highlight.
Okay. So now I have a good um, darker color. I'm going to go back to my yellow, um, burnt sienna, sorry, white, and I'm going to highlight my burnt sienna, putting a little bit of yellow ochre in there. There, that's a good, nice skin tone. I'm going to come here, forehead. Cheekbone. Now we're going to go a little bit darker, medium tone. Burnt umber and a bit of burnt sienna. Mix it with the mid tones. Go behind the ear. So all I'm doing right now is I'm watching on the reference the values. Light, dark, light, dark. So I'm going to go in and check all these values and make sure that I follow and I have the right values in here. Um, most of the time we are worried or we are concerned and we pay attention to the color. It's the value more than the color that we want to make sure that we're getting the right value. The right lights, darks. Um, colors will follow after. Even if you do the, you have the right color, if you don't have the right value, it doesn't work. See now, you see here, that is a light value, too much. So I'm going to go back, darken a little bit down here to get that roundness and underneath the color or the underneath the chin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, zoom in a bit, see if I zoom in with this. And I'm going to do a little bit of the hair. And then we'll do the hand next week. So I'm mixing a yellow ochre, burnt umber, 
and actually a yellow ochre and burnt umber. I don't have white here. And I'm going to put some of the highlights on her hair. This way, next week, when we do the hair, uh, the hands, I mean, the hair will be done, so it's not going to be a problem. Even with the hair, you have to pay attention to the uh, values. Otherwise, the hair will look like it's flat. So some areas are darker than other areas, especially here where the bun is. Right here. So where the bun is, it's darker. I mean, uh, it looks like her hair is darker right here because it folds over. And right here, this is where you get more highlights. Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit of yellow ochre again, tiny bit of white with my brush, more yellow ochre. And highlights part of the hair. It's always, I always highlight where the head is wider. So I have dark, medium, and I'm doing light. Okay. I think we're good with this. That's it. I'll just wait. Usually I just wait for it to dry a bit and then I go adjust. If the color is too dark, I'll adjust the highlights or the values, I should say. Guess we can do the neck. Okay. 
So I'm adding a tiny bit of burnt umber to my combination of skin tone that I'm using, which is uh, um, burnt sienna and white. And I'm adding a tiny bit of burnt umber because this part of the neck here this should be a little bit darker. And again, I'm thinking about values and I'm thinking about when I highlight the hand, it shouldn't blend with the neck color. So let's take, make sure that whatever is behind this hand, especially here at the bottom, is darker. And then I'm going to take again burnt sienna some white and just highlight the neck right here. This is where it's more exposed to light and then let leave the other part darker. I mean in the in the reference, if you look at the reference carefully and you look at her thumb, her thumb is kind of mix, mixing, you know, blending with the neck. So I'm trying to not have the same, same, uh, same um, uh, highlights in there or shadows. Anyway, next week when we start highlighting or working on the hand, we will, I will adjust if something needs to be adjusted. I always wait for the paint to dry and then I'll, I check what I need to do in terms of changing or adding or, or, or adjusting the values. Just gonna keep it this way. Yeah, it's good. See that part, this part of the hair is drying darker. That's why I like to wait and then adjust my highlights once the color is dry, the paint is dry. It's better. Her hair has a little bit of red in it, so I'm, I'm adding burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and white to get that red color. Okay. Mm.
Okay, so we're doing the hand, this one here, holding the tea the cup. Oh. Uh oh, have to be careful with that one. Okay. So where the, the inside of her hand right here, we're gonna go dark. So I'm adding more more um, burnt umber down here. And then the rest, actually I'm gonna do the burnt umber everywhere for now with, with burnt sienna and white. This is going to dry darker anyway. This is raw umber and white, and this is what I used for the uh, actual wall. Um, the only reason I'm doing this is just because I need to... I need to fix her thumb from... Oh, oh, oh. I need to fix the thumb from... So this is a cut this is the wall behind her. So I'm doing um negative painting right now and I'm going to keep it very simple burnt umber and white you said? burnt umber and white for the background color okay there's another uh, kind of a knuckle right here but I'm I'm going to ignore that it's just too much detail um it's it's fine just the way it is i don't have to put all of the detail in there so i'm just going to highlight this part because this is where it's getting most of the light and i'm going to do this and i'm going to highlight as well the top of the knuckle or or thumb I should say Meton. So what I'm, what we need to do is have three values in here, dark, medium, light. This is the dark one here, medium right there, light is right here. Burnt umber. These values I'm putting in here are shaping her hand. Meton.
acrylic dries darker so just have to keep on adjusting my my values and this is highlighted now and with the highlight I'm just gonna go in highlights have a certain shape so I'm just gonna follow kind of the shape if I can that I'm seeing in the reference but with kind of a more of a um, trying I'm trying to make it um, simplified I'm trying to simplify all of this what I'm seeing by using different values I'm going to add a fourth value. I have three already. I'm going to add a fourth one, which is just burnt umber. And it's going to be here. And you're not going to see it now, but you will see it once we start putting the color of the um, mug. When, add the, when I put the color of the mug here, you will see how dark it is in there. Put some darker value in here. And honestly, just let, let's leave it like that. Um, I'm just going to connect this here, dark. And we're going to leave it. So when I'm doing something like this, I'm looking at values. So if I'm looking at this hand, I see highlight over here, strong. Then I see medium tone right there. Then I see dark, dark, very dark down here. So, but you see all of these movements in here, those kind of shape all of that shape not movement shape that I'm seeing I simplify it so all I'm looking at is values I'm looking at medium tone right here and I'll just go straight instead of having this going up down again I'll just go straight um, medium tone right here dark the highlight is not straight. The highlight goes on an angle right there, and then it goes up. So I'm not saying we have to exactly follow what's happening, but I'm simplifying it. This is how I simplify it. I look at shape, a shape. What, it, what does it look like? What does this highlight look like? It looks like a triangle. So it's easy for me then at this point to put this as a triangle right there. And then the the thumb goes up and there's a highlight right there. And now I have a highlight and a mid-tone. Perfect. It's highlight right there and it goes down and that's it. That's done. I just said that's it. The dog went downstairs. <laughs> Is it time for dinner? Yes. 
It's so funny. I'm just uh, working on the face a bit. Just just highlights, nothing major. Okay. We're going to highlight the back of the neck because it's it's uh it's dry right now. The paint is dry, so we can highlight this part. It will dry more. It will dry darker, I mean. And if it doesn't, that's okay. I can always glaze it, make it dark, darker. Okay, it's good. We're good. Okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna stop for today. Okay, so this is where we're at this week, and next week we will continue working on the hand and the rest of the maybe the table and chairs or. Probably the table and chairs before we start working on her uh, top and uh, dress.